and welcome. I am Ish Cooper and today I'm back with a brand new Doctor Who classic series review. Today we're doing the next story from season 26. We're doing Ghostlight, one of the notorious, uh, confusing and complicated and ridiculous and just bad uh, Doctor Who stories of the classic era. So yeah, let's talk about that today. Uh, that's gonna be fun. I don't have a lot of memory of this because it's a bit, it's too weird and it's too confusing and it's quite a lot. So I'm going to talk about it the best of my ability, but I didn't think I could do a very well structured review with this story because of how complicated and weird and wacky it is. So I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Today I'll be joined with a very, very special guest. So um, yeah, we're going to do the basically the same review, but I am with a special guest. Special being the operative word. So hello, um, this is the main chunk of the review. I'm joined here with Jack Murphy, who you may know from Drunk Lords. If you haven't already seen it, check it out. Good series. We watched Ghostlight together on a sort of call and watched it at the same time. And this story is just ridiculous. It's it's it's, it's overcomplicated. It's weird. I still don't really understand what was going on half the time. So I thought I'd make this a bit more of a discussional type review and uh, have Jack here. So hello. Hello. How are you, mate? I'm um, I'm talking about Ghostlight, so I'm never going to be all right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah. So as always, we'll probably start with the plot characters best bits if there are already and then out of 10 and then i'll cut back to to george in the future for his outro so that'll be a laugh the plot what happened in the plot <laughs> i don't know where to start i don't know where to start well i, I think that the plot overall kind of explores um, a lot of different things at once i yeah. think the, the one, the one overall, the, one, <laughs> the one overall theme is probably change like all of the characters change throughout no, no mm. one is the same as what they were at the very start. Maybe also the fear of change is is leading that. Change in what respect, though? Because I don't really... I don't know about that. Like, part of me, I agree with you, but part of me, at the same time, I'm a little bit like, I didn't really sense that. Like, the, the whole thing about no. the Doctor's taking Ace to this house that she burnt down, he knows that. He's trying to get her to confront her guilt in a way, but then there's some other shit going on. <laughs> uh, I think I think he's trying to get her to um, not only confront her guilt but her fears as well, which is something we don't actually see with many other doctors. He goes about it in a very sly way. He doesn't tell her. He yeah. just takes her there, which is quite dark. I think he's 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 not afraid to push his companions, and I think this is kind of one of those McCoy stories that is re really showcases for what that, this doctor was about. For that, for that, yeah, I'd, I'd agree, and we'll get on to obviously the doctor specifically in just a bit. Mm. But like off the top of your head, can you basically remember anything about the story? Well, because I can pick out bits and bats, but nothing coherent that made any sense. And I, I think this is obviously this yeah. is obviously known to be a common thing. There'll be a few people who'll be like, I understand Ghost like when I first saw it as a child and all that sort of stuff. But the majority, I can, I'm pretty sure, do agree that it's a bit of a complicated mess of a story and. I don't think yeah. we're alone in thinking that. There is an extended edition. We didn't watch that, it's worth saying. We watched just the three episodes I that came out. Yeah, I didn't want to watch any more than that because people had already sort of hyped it up to be this weirdly overcomplicated, quite dull story. Not dull, but like not very good story. Certainly not dull. It doesn't yeah. way too much. It's just a lot, I think. And I find it hard to to sort of, you know, love it as as much as some people do. Yeah, because I know it's wild and wacky and all that sort of thing, but it's 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 not very good. That's the problem. I'm having. Mm. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's if it's just n n either not very good or way too complicated. I enjoyed the story. It, I enjoyed up two stories where I think, what mm. the hell is going on for most of the thing? C Classic Who to it, me is already complicated enough without. It's just way too complex. There's so much going on. There's so many different themes that it's trying to pedal. There's so many weird things happening that you just you worried that if you you blink and you you'll miss some big important plot detail because there's so much happening and so much yeah. that has happened that you just end up forgetting about. They just move on and, and it's just that element of the plot I don't like. And there's a reason we're not splitting this into first half and last half. Just generally as a whole, the plot is is a mess. And I personally just don't like it very much in terms of like the plot specifically. Some themes are interesting, but overall I think the plot is just, it's just too weird. I can't, <laughs> I can't really get my head around it. That's not a good sign. Yeah, no, it is a, it is a weird plot. Yeah, I do, I'd agree yeah. with that. Yeah, I mean, we'll talk a bit about that. We'll talk about the Doctor. Uh, we'll do some characters. Jack put the thing on screen. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about the seventh Doctor, Sylvester McCoy. This is the second story that I've seen um, from this season. I've definitely seen more Sylvester McCoy stories, but this is the second from this season. I think he was very good. 
I think Sepulchre is quite good at this. What do you think? Yeah, no, definitely. I think, it, as I said earlier, it really showcases the dark side to his doctor. Mm. I, I think I think that probably the development between him and Ace and what he was doing, trying to push her and so on. I think I think that's that's quite out there. You wouldn't you can't imagine, for example, you know, the tenth Doctor deliberately pushing someone without telling them to mm. overcome their fears, and it really showcases the darker side to his character. That's I think. true. Yeah, I agree with that. I think he's he gives off a very good performance in the story mainly because he's not like he's not sticking with the companion the whole time he's just he's going around doing lots of different things but he's always the center of attention like whenever Sylvester McCoy's on screen my eyes are fixed on him because I want to see what you don't know what he's going to do next I think that's a very interesting type of role for the doctor to play that hasn't really been done a lot before I suppose it was an interesting uh, take and I don't know whether that's just Sylvester in general or that's just for this story but I think for this story he was specifically quite enjoyable I'd say to watch 100% 100% probably the standout character. Oh, absolutely. Moving on to the companion, we've got Ace. Again, I, I, I liked her more in this story than I did in, like, Battlefield. I think I think the more time I spend with Ace, and I think I talked about this in my Battlefield review, is that the more time I spend with these characters over the season, the more I like them. So Vesta mm. McCoy certainly steps up in this story, and I think Ace does as well. I, I think one of the fundamentals that I noticed with Ace is that there's actually a sense of, just from the first episode to the last episode, I think there's a, almost a sense of maturity she grows up through the story of overcoming her fears and i think you see her character develop quite a lot in those three episodes in all in mm-hmm. all fairness yeah like like as you were just saying about the continuation of growth for a character and the complexity of and depth of a character changes throughout season you grow to like them more you understand their what motivates them and so on i think this story is quite a, a fundamental in that i think we really mm. see that difference yeah that's true i i think she definitely grows i think it's it, i always find it more interesting when it plays on something personal personal to the companion mm. and out of a four episode uh, four episode four story season two of the stories focus on something about ace's past or history mm. uh obviously you've got the, the the fact that she burnt down this house in perryvale and the doctor was taking her back to this house when it's still you know populated mm. playing on her guilt and having to build on that as her character but yeah, especially and i'll talk about this next week a little bit more detail but obviously because of fenric with the whole um mother thing i thought was fascinating and i think it's a big strong point of this season and this sort of era of the show to really lean into that more companion side thing that's something new who does a lot more is having a more companion focused type feel I think that classic who started to reach towards that especially towards its end and i would have liked to have seen where a season 27 or 28 would have gone uh, with ace as a character um because yeah. i feel like they somehow they had somewhat of an idea as to what they were doing they just never finished it and it just it does well obviously we'll again we'll get to survival but it does feel abrupt and it is a shame because mm. i'm really starting to enjoy ace in these stories um We'll talk about the next bit, which I've just written Light. Now, I don't really remember much about Light as an enemy character, other than the fact that it looked like he was painted gold throughout the whole story and had this weird sort of haze effect that they just sort of like printed on top of his scenes. What did you think about Light, Jack? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, um, it's fine. I don't either. It's... <laughs> maybe maybe light is the culmination of fear of change. That's that's what I would think. I, I guess that that growth of fear. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> I'm. Tr- I, I'd love to be able to think like that, but unfortunately, I look at it very simply as that it's the man in gold paint who's somewhat threatening, but is probably by far the the worst villain of this season. I'd say, like, because I just don't feel an attachment. He's forgettable. I know you haven't seen Battlefield yet, but like, even comparing to like survival, like I, f- I feel like the master and the shoot the virus thing held more of a imminent threat and danger than mm. this weird being walking around sort of passively aggressively just talking to people. There's more, yeah, there's less intimidation from Light, I feel, in the story. And I just didn't really enjoy much of that character. It's like, it's like I'm trying to remember what was happening in the story. Because I'm like, thinking, like, there was like, Nuns? Was there nuns in the this servant. house? Servants, and they were just sort of yeah. they were doing something. If there were nuns like in it, being that would in be like a more weird. spaceship, and it was like there's just too much going on in Ghost Light, and I think that's very much you know summed up. And we'll talk about I think we'll talk about overall um, and the police officer as well. There's yeah. so many weird characters. I forgot about the police officer. Yeah, and the guy who kept like the guy who was like Charles Darwin's opposite number, who just sort of vibing throughout the whole episode. <laughs> he was like old, and then he like. Turns into a gorilla. Oh yeah! Oh god, the, the um the like monkey guy. That was 
Can I call? Is that is that is that offensive? Did I say something offensive, or is he actually? Cause I thought no, he no, was he, like a yeah, a primate. A primate. He was primate. Yeah. Wasn't he? Or, yeah. Or was well, he? Or was he? Was he a Neanderthal? I can't oh, remember. Oh, hang on, hang on. You might have been in the. You might be a Neanderthal. I think Nimrod was his name, wasn't he? Yeah, Nimrod. A Neanderthal, born oh. into a tribe of mammoth herders during prehistory. He serves as butler. That's it. I don't know anything else. <laughs> it's so weird that I just even like taking a couple of weeks aside to distill on the story. I'm none the wiser. I don't really know what happened. We'll talk we, about one of one of our weirdest <laughs> ones that we've watched for sure together. Oh. 100%. 100%. 100%. Best bits. Were there any? I quite liked um, Nimrod's character, actually. I thought he was quite entertaining. Best bits. Hmm. <laughs> you got any best bits, mate? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> the credits. The credits at the end of the third episode. That was my favourite part of this whole story, I think. Just finally being done with it. Cool. I didn't enjoy it. I don't know if you can tell at home. I didn't enjoy this at all. I... I quite liked it when those weird, like, were they lizard creatures came out of the thing and Ace was, like, trapped in the basement, which was a spaceship, and they're like... Eah. Jack's best bit that he can only remember half the details of. It really does say a lot about the story, <laughs> isn't it? Right. Um, ah, overall thoughts. I love weird, wacky Doctor Who. I thought it was interesting. I still don't understand it. I probably will have to rewatch it at some point. Do I want to? Not overly. <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't like it. I really didn't like it. I thought it was too weird to, to sort of enjoy personally. Now, I know there'll be a lot of people who will have long, fond memories of this story. You absolutely love it from when they were kids. If they grew up with this story and this was their doctor and their era, then I can totally understand that. Because I'll defend Love and Monsters, you know, to the nth yeah. degree for being a laugh. Now, maybe I just don't get what Ghostlight was trying to do. Maybe I just don't get the more humorous side of it that people like to you know the, the bits that people enjoy about the story it might be so bad that it's good i don't know i don't know the public perception of this story i've gone extremely white it's it's so bright it's I'm, so, I'm ascending it's ah! <laughs> Oh, Christ. Did he do that? Did he absorb people or did he like shock people with light? I can't even remember what he did. The light is passively aggressively talking to me. Help. Oh. Right. Out of 10. I, I, I think overall I, I enjoyed the story. I know George ranks a lot of his reviews as like like rewatch with re That's a big in mind. part of mine. That was, that was a big word to say. Sorry. I'd probably give it probably like a 6 out of 10 for me. Not brilliant, but weird. And I liked it because it was weird. What about you, George? <laughs> Certainly not six. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, again, like, I do rate mine on a little bit of rewatchability. Like, it's a big factor of it because it's got to be entertaining enough for where I want to go, like, oh, I could watch that again. I would never watch this again. I don't think I'm ever going to watch this again. I think now I've reviewed it, now I've talked about it, I don't ever have to think or watch that episode ever again. <laughs> I don't want to. I have no desire to. The only time I would have to is if I was being somehow forced to against my own will. <laughs> Absolutely terrible, hated it, too complicated, really weird, not my cup of tea in the slightest. Sylvester McCoy was good though, as was Ace, so I'm going to lift it up a little bit and be a little bit generous and give it a 3 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that is that for this review. Thank you so much uh, for watching this. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like. Me and Jack do a series on this channel called Last of the Drunk Lords, where we watch Doctor Who episodes whilst under the influence of alcohol. So if you want to sort of watch that and you haven't already seen it, we've got four episodes currently up. Episode five is going to have Crispy Pro in it, and that's coming very, very soon. So yes, I hope you um, check out that series. I hope you enjoy it, all that sort of thing. But yes, in the meantime, leave a like, comment below for any more suggestions in the future. Subscribe with notifications on if you haven't already. You can check out my Patreon page for early access and exclusive content, as well as my Twitter and Instagram, which are linked in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.